Hey, what's up, guys? This is Helicrafter RC. Uh, again, I'm doing a video about my QS8006 GT. Had a couple questions specifically about how to mod this to make it go faster. Uh, again, these big coaxials are super duper slow outside, especially this. People complaining that you have no forward flight, any type of wind at all, and this thing's moving backwards. Um, I actually had some questions about um, my aesthetics, I guess, would be my, my paint jobs. Um, this is my second QS. I had a video of my first one posted. Um, that one died. I fried the board and fried the tail motor actually doing this tail blade mod. Um, so I'm going to explain how to do this properly without frying it so you guys don't have to buy a second one. Um, I used the canopy off my first QS. I already had this painted. It's a satin OD green um, with the decals on there. I actually have some more military decals on the way so it's not quite finished yet. Uh, but basically if you look at the standard canopy here it is um, compared to mine I have uh, flattened off the edges of the cockpit a little bit kind of see how this one arcs back uh, just to give it more of an aggressive look and I also uh, buffed it down so that it's more of a flat sheen instead of this shiny sheen that this has give it more of a military feel uh, let's see the rockets here painted those they were a uh, chintzy like white and red plastic so I did these up gray with yellow tips kinda gave it more of a, a realistic feel uh, broke the whole thing down this time did the outer frame the OD green to match the canopy changed the gear covers um, both the frame and the gear covers had this checkered pattern to it I'm sure you've, you've seen it on if you have the QS but I painted this uh, satin black did the tail boom satin black um, the vertical stabilizer back here um, I guess it's not really vertical, it's more horizontal and it's just kind of there for looks, but this uh, did an OD green to match everything else. Um, and I did my tail blade here, uh, tail rotor is satin black. Um, so that's basically it as far as the aesthetics. Um, I do have a, a HVLP sprayer. So uh, basically this is all just Rust-Oleum, but instead of being through a rattle can, I used a compressor and sprayed it up nice. Um, so moving on, as far as the tail blade mod, you guys were asking me about it. This is what it looks like once it's on there. Um, basically, it is a modification of the stock blade. Now, the problem with this is because this motor is super duper tiny. Any changes to this, if you try to upgrade the motor, you're going to blow your, your uh, board. If you try to put on too big of a blade, you're going to blow your board. And that's what happened on my first one. So I've gone through kind of a trial and error and got this perfect. Basically what you want to do, um, I'm going to link this so you guys can see it. Um, there's a website that sells these uh, GWS, it's called the Tiger Moth prop, it's from an electric biplane. And it's basically meant to have slow rotation but push a lot of air. And I think this is the 9x7 or the 7x9, um, I don't know, I'll link it, I'll let you guys know, um, model, which basically blades look like this. This one's obviously been cut off the center hub already. Um, so this is what you look like, right? This is our, our standard tail blade for the QS right here. Um, and this is going to be basically the size, well, uh, the center hub is removed, but if this was all together, it'd be about that size. So you can see there's a huge difference in the size. So what you want to do, um, I have one cut down here a little bit smaller than we should, but you want to kind of keep, you want to try to use the stock pitch um, that's already on this. So you're looking to want to cut this. Um, I would suggest using maybe a Dremel if you have one. You can actually cut it with a pair of sharp scissors and then just sand it down to get it smooth. But what you want to do is you want to cut it probably right around the second line right here, right in front of that. Cut it there and cut it there. Um, see, this is one I already have. This is this was a stock piece here that I that I cut down um, to try to actually make it lighter weight, but I ended up cutting it too small. So you can see uh, by taking a look at that, you obviously want to get a bigger size than this, um, a little bit wider. Um, I don't know if I can get this on the picture here. Let me get this. Let me bring mine over into the light. There you go. So you can kind of see about the length I have. Um, on the stock blade, uh, about a half inch is what I recommend to do. Um, so basically what you want to do is cut that where I said, then you want to go ahead and take your Tiger Moth uh, blade. These are only about a dollar, so you should order a few of them. Um, you cut the center hub off this also. Throw that center hub away, you won't need it. 
Uh, these, after you cut the center hub, if you look at the ones I've already made on this helicopter over here, you can see if you compare the two side by side um, that it's cut. Put the tips together here. You want to cut it right about here. You don't want the skinny piece on the end. What happened is I actually tried to do the full length blade, uh, have it out like this, and it was uh, too much for the motor and I actually fried the board. So this length is what you want. Cut it right about here. Go ahead and uh, glue that right on. You use super glue is the best. Uh, don't use epoxy. Epoxy sucks. It's too uh, rubbery. You won't really get a good bond. You want to use super glue. Uh, just that quick, cheap super glue. Get it from Lowe's, Dollar. It's cheap. Home Depot, whatever. You want to go ahead and cut this, like I said, right about there. Glue that right onto your stock prop on each side. Make sure to try to keep each side equal because obviously you want to have equal proportions on either side. Um, and then try to match the pitch. So you're just going to kind of have to hold it uh, and slide it all the way up against the center hub. Uh, just like I, I'll shine this one over in the light for you. Just like I have on this one. See, right up against it. Glue it on each side. That's basically all you have to do. Now, because this is not uh, a double direction prop, it's a single single direction prop, you're gonna have a lot of increased forward flight, but your reverse is gonna be pretty affected. Um, so, so basically, I mean, you really only wanna be going forward anyways. This thing kinda sucks going reverse. Reverse will basically slow it down now. You have a little bit of direction going in reverse, but it, it really drastically changes it. But you really want your forward direction, so this is going to make a huge difference for you. The other thing that I didn't have in my first video when you saw the flight of this was adding clay to the inside of the nose. Now, the clay combined with this tail prop make this thing a whole different animal. It moves pretty good, pretty well, especially for not having um, any aileron control. As you're coming in um, at full full elevator with this, and you you you're taking your turn, it'll actually start to bank, um, which is pretty crazy. As you can actually make baking turns with it now, and you have to be careful because these babies will slap together really easy, cause it to crash. That sucks. So um, as far as putting the weight in the nose, just go to like your local store, uh, hobby shop, or. I don't know, any kind of local craft store probably will have it all, so that's where I got this. This is just modeling clay, little kid stuff, whatever. I drew this line on here to show you approximately how much clay I put in the nose. Um, so if you look at this, relatively sized, you know, compared to my hand, you have maybe, I don't know, two inches width by an inch thick. It probably came out to the size of what a golf ball, maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball, um, but it really does have some substantial weight to it. And then basically all you got to do, jam it all the way down there in the nose, clump it in there real well, kind of keep it even so the weight's distributed even. Um, and I know there's different models of this QS. This is the QS2, so instead of having the battery up here, you have the battery in this center box directly under the blades, which is where you want to have the weight. So I wouldn't suggest claying the nose. Um, of the older QSs because you already have the battery up there so the weight differ I mean you could probably just slide the battery up to adjust the weight um, the clay is going to affect your battery life it's going to be a little bit heavier so when operating in the day I always disconnect all my LED lights um, that gives it a little bit more battery life and the other thing is it's not going to recover as quickly so now that it's moving so fast with the blade and the clay Say you're making your banking turn and you turn too sharp, it banks too sharp, you gotta hit that throttle to get it back up off the ground uh, so you don't crash, it's gonna respond a little bit slower. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, it's gonna turn sharper, obviously, because of the weight in the nose, but your your uh, throttle going would mean your, your up and down motion is gonna be a little bit slower than it was. Um, and again, if you, I know a lot of people mount cameras on these. If you're going to mount a camera, I'd take the clay out because it already adds a lot of weight. But that's, that's it. It's pretty simple to do. Really makes a big difference. And I believe that this is just about balanced correctly now. It'll still hover um, without any wind, without it drifting too far forward because of the weight. But before, even with a tail blade, you have anything more than two to three miles an hour and winds and this thing really wouldn't move. Um, now, I mean, I can fly into five knot winds and, and have it at least have forward flight and 
you know, if there's no breeze at all, it'll do, you know, maybe nine, nine and a half knots now, which, you know, you're looking at something like, the, you know, an aligned T-Rex that does 80 miles an hour, but for something this size, moving 15 miles an hour is fast. It's actually kind of scary when you're out there seeing this thing moving around, especially if you're standing underneath in it. But that's it, guys. I hope this video helps you out. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you.